is Recordology. Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, I've got cool records to share with you today. Brand new ones, in fact. So new that they are not even for sale as far as I can tell. Now these are, they may be a tie-in to Record Store Days 2020, I am not sure. But the only place I can find them for sale right now is Deer Park Distributors, which is Crosley's distribution organization or company and uh, that they partner with. So I'm not seeing where I can give you guys a link for them yet. That may be that they're just not available to the public yet. I'm not 100% sure. When that time comes that I can, I will share that with you. But we have um, a set of four Johnny Cash records, Sun Records, and a new Post Malone. And what they're doing is they're reissuing uh, some Post Malone material from 2019 on this format. So there's a whole series of these. Um, that they've issued so far. But my main interest, well, can I put that over there? My main interest is the Johnny Cash. Uh, as you can see, um, these are three inch records and they're brand new. I mean, you can't get any better than that. This is early Johnny Cash material. This is like 1950s Sun Records stuff. So without further ado, let's just open them together. I don't know if they're colored vinyl. I don't know anything about them. After we open all of this vinyl, we're gonna test it out in a couple of different ways. And including playing them on the LP7 to see the most, the highest quality sound we can get out of these. So we got the outer cardboard shell, which is common, and then you get the sleeve. And in the sleeve usually comes a poster. So let's see. It's like a Johnny Cash poster, probably. Awesome. These are so cool. Awesome. Look at that, guys. Sun Records. Sam Phillips would be proud. Obviously, Sun Records was the launching pad for so much great talent, including Elvis and Jerry Lee Lewis, among others. Obviously, Johnny Cash. Just amazing. Love this stuff. You can still tour the studio to this day. Very, very cool. All right, let's look at the vinyl itself. Three, two, one. Okay, this black vinyl. But you know, with the Sun Records label, it's still awesome. And we've done a lot of material, a lot of shows on three inch vinyl in the past. But if you're new to three inch vinyl and this is the first time seeing this, what you're looking at is a three inch ABS plastic disc that is one sided. And this top layer actually has a vinyl laminate on top. So it's kind of like a picture disc laminated on top, a clear, or not picture disc, a flexi disc laminated on top of an ABS plastic disc. The reason for that is that you can't press vinyl in the three inch size without having major problems with wow and flutter. In order to get it accurate, you either have to press it to seven inches and die cut out a three inch piece, or you have to do this laminate process. So let's open the rest of these here. And they actually do sound amazingly well. We've done sound tests in the past, and you would be surprised, perhaps, although I'm gonna show you again today, exactly how good these sound. Now, the three inch record players, I've got three of them, I'll show you here in a minute, are cool, and they have built-in speakers, all that fun stuff. It looks like the same poster, is that the same one? Pretty sure it's the same poster, awesome though. Um, the three inch record players are cool and they have aux outputs. Some of them have magnetic cartridges and all that good stuff. But what's really intriguing to me is playing these on a full size record player, which if you have a manual record player like the LP7, you can do that. Okay. There we go. Awesome. Look at the label. Look at the music notes around the outside edge. Balsam Prison Blues. Just awesome stuff, you guys. I do, I have to say, I wish they were colored vinyl. It's the same poster again. There's this one. Huh. Ice Cube just decided to jump out of the refrigerator. That's nice. I walked the line. Obviously, these are all big time classic songs. The songs are also truncated a little bit. So they are slightly edited down lengthwise. But still super awesome. Memphis, Tennessee. This one looks a little different. Does have a different? This might have. Oh, that's a sleeve. We didn't look at the sleeves yet. Are the sleeves all the same? 
Oh, the sleeves are colored. I'm making a mess, as I always do. Okay, so there's different colored sleeves. Those are awesome. I love how tactile the three inch format is. You get the inner sleeve, the outer sleeve, the box. It's just super, super awesome. Cool. All right, let's open up Post Malone here. As you can see, an A for effort on the uh, cover art here. It's like, come on, guys. Let's go ahead and open some posty here. Just kind of a tomato soup red. Let's go ahead and see what fine artwork we have here. Okay. That's cool. It's like a video game. Interesting. Cool. And the record itself, where did I put it? Can you spot it? Okay, here we go. Really? I was hoping for colored vinyl, at least one of these. There we go. Post Malone. PM3. These are 33 and a third RPM. It's super cool. Imminently collectible. It is sort of costly. I mean, these cost about as much as a regular, I mean, like $12 to $15 each. So oftentimes they're sold in sets like this Johnny Cash set. Johnny Cash set is just that. It's a set. Uh, we've reviewed a lot of other ones in the past too. The uh, uh, Peanuts, Christmas songs, and um, yeah. So there's a lot of material out there. And usually they come in four disc sets. And uh, yeah, the Disney song is all in colored vinyl. I think that's really cool. But now let's go ahead, go back um, to the music room, and we're going to go ahead and listen to the music and uh, see what we get from there. Okay, so we've talked a lot in the past about the different 3-inch record players. We have this. This is the 3-inch uh, Mini Cruiser. Came out at CES this year. I can't believe that that was this year. <laughs> Man, it seems like a long time ago. There's these. Bleh, bleh. This is the RSD. Three. This is Crosley's first three-inch record player. Again, this is all done in conjunction with people that were involved in the original 8-band release, 2002-ish. And then they also came out with this this year as well. I think this is awesome. This is the RSD 2020. RSD stands for Record Store Day. It's awesome, guys. I mean, it's clear. Come on, check that out. We've reviewed all of this. If you want to see more, check out our videos on the subject. But... And they do have audio outputs. I mean, the uh, this and the RSD3 have the aux output. And then this guy, oh, it does the same. I thought it had RCA's output. So anyway, you can uh, connect this to a larger sound system and get better sound. However, for the best sound, we're just going to play the records themselves on a higher-end record player. In this case, we're using the LP7. Here are the records that we were just opening, by the way. These are the inner sheets that show the song name. And we're just going to go ahead and play them. Fronts all match. First on here, I've got Post Malone. So let me set up the shot a little bit more conducive uh, to that tiny little record over there. I had to make a customized little adapter. That's a separate story why they use this size adapter, you know, blah, blah, blah. Some of the original uh, eight band records, like. Like this one right here, have the smaller hole. I love colored vinyl. Why can't they all be a color? You know what I mean? Um, and as you can see, those have that spindle size, and they also have a little adapter. But what if you want to play it on a standard adapter, a standard spindle? You need yet another not commercially available, at least not largely commercially available. I took that's exactly what I did, actually. I took one of these, a regular cheapo 45 adapter, and I took some wire cutters, and I just clipped the plastic away until I got down to that inner part right there, which just so happens to be the right size, or nearly. It's a little bit too small, so I have one very fancy a layer of tape over this and you can just kind of add layers until you get it perfectly this is very important when you have such a small diameter disc like a three inch disc the wow and flutter is completely dependent on the accuracy of it being centered on that spindle 
So there was actually a redesign that took place with the little adapters for the RSD3. And that resulted in better sound quality. In fact, there was a, a version that made it out there onto the market. You guys probably had no idea about this stuff, unless you've seen my videos where I talked about it before. But it's just something the most, the average normal person would never know. They actually released some of this, the adapters that were a little bit too big, and then the record wouldn't seat properly on the platter. So the, the trick was making them loose enough that the record would seat properly on the platter, but not too loose so that they didn't, you know, encounter wow and flutter. So the trick is with this customization is to make find that perfect balance. This is close. So when you hear if you if and when you hear any wow and flutter, it's gonna be the fault of my adapter. The fact that my adapter isn't hundred percent perfect. It's pretty close. But really focus on the fidelity of the record. I think that's a more interesting thing. Okay, sorry for the deer in the headlights look. I've got the L C D or the LED light panel up on top now, just to give us a little bit of illumination on this dark platter and dark plinth and all that stuff. But let's go ahead and listen to a little Post Malone. Obviously, this is going to be highly copyrighted music, so I'm only going to be able to share a clip here and there. But listen to the fidelity. It's truly amazing. Wow, I need to dust that thing. When the light's not on it, you have no idea how dirty that platter is. So while we're at it, do a little dusting here. When I reviewed this turntable, I said that was probably an aluminum because it's so hatter, so hatter, so heavy. That platter is so heavy and so dense. It's neither metal nor MDF. It's actually uh, a special plastic that's a very heavy, heavy. And I mean, you'd swear it was solid steel. This platter is so heavy. And obviously, you want a heavy platter because a heavy platter means good inertia, which means speed stability, which means minimalization of wow and flutter so okay let's go ahead make sure our record is seated firmly flat okay it's pretty close let's give it a listen okay you know what that was fine and all but let's listen to the the johnny cash on the uh, rsd 2020 actually i changed my mind let's connect it to the big speakers here and just listen to the fidelity on a direct feed from this guy. This is so cool. And records really belong, small records belong on a small record player, right? Let's listen to a little bit of this. Because you're fine, I won't the line. I hear the train a coming. It's rolling around the bay. Get rhythm. When you get the blues, come on, get rhythm. Okay guys, that's gonna do it for today. And whether you play it on the three inch record player with a direct feed like this, or on the larger record player with an adapter, then I think it's amazing the fidelity that you can get out of these little discs. I think they're super cool. All right, I hope you thought this was interesting, guys. If so, give me a thumbs up, share this out. Subscribe if you haven't done so already, but that's gonna do it for now, guys. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.